welcome to The Lens at 177. On this show, we are speaking to one of the revolutionary new companies in the music industry, uh, someone who's setting a new trend um, and probably setting the new platform for music in Fiji and the region. And I'm talking about none other than Viti Bop Music and the man himself, Tix, who's here with us, and uh, Thunder, the producer behind some of the biggest hits that you hear on radio and watch on television and on social media. So um, I invited them on the show because music in Fiji has not been the same since the VT1's artists emerged on the scene. And uh, we're here just to learn a bit more about how you know, the whole company started, the idea of the company. Um, how did Thunder come up with the sound that you all are enjoying today? And uh, I'm sure there's more exciting things to come into the future. So I'll start by um, asking uh, Tix to explain how did the whole idea of forming you know, VT1 come, come about? I think uh, for that question, I'm not the right person to answer that. Right. Uh, it's really good to have Thunder here at, uh, at the show today to discuss, because uh, contrary to popular belief, I didn't uh, join right at the start of VT1s. Right. I joined uh, just this year, or end of uh, last year, actually, right. to assist at VT Bop Music. But Thunder was really uh, there from the beginning, and I think uh, he'd be best to, dis to like, talk you through that uh, start. Eh? Okay, well, so, it would be good to hear from the man himself. Sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of our uh, viewers, a lot of people in Fiji don't really know how vt ones actually started. They, they, they hear the music, they hear the end product, but they don't know how the whole thing came together. If you could just explain, you know, how it all began. Uh, there, uh, this was uh, two years ago, uh, 2021. Uh, shout out to Steven Veracula, who I started this uh, uh, VT1's uh, branding with. Um, he was the composer for the songs and I made the music. Uh, what happened was uh, uh, we started to, um, before VT1's we were recording hip hop music and uh, the other Fiji hip hop uh, artists. Um, and then we met, uh, started uh, meeting up with these singers, and from there the idea sparked to let's try out and uh, do something different apart from hip hop. Right. And uh, Steve also started uh, composing uh, Fijian songs, because Steve himself is a hip hop rapper. Eh? Yes. But uh, he was experimenting on the Fijian composition. So um, when we uh, released the first album in uh, November 2021 uh, it was like an experiment yeah? we just mm -hmm. test if uh, there's an audience for this type of music and and here we are now what, what was the first uh, hit song that emerged out of that album I think that was uh, Ratu's uh, Yale Yale, eh? yeah. Yale, Yale. Yale. Mm -hmm. okay and, uh, and while, while I have you you know that sound that sound and it's still a uh, something that uh, people talk about today how did you come up with the idea of that <clears throat> of that that kind of beat and, and the instrumentation that you use i think it's mostly because of uh, the hip-hop influence that both steve and i have yes uh, it's like a majority of the beats is from the hip-hop uh, genre right. but then we also try and mix like uh, sounds from the islands the lali yes and make it authentic to Fiji. Right. Mm. And then did you <clears throat> initially when you, you know, when you're putting something together, um, I can remember as an artist myself back in the day, for my beard, you can tell how long ago <laughs> that one. But, uh, you know, sometimes when you try something new, you're not sure whether people will accept it. I think that's a hard... Uh, what, did you ever did you ever go through that? Like I said, mm. uh, when we dropped the album, we weren't sure if there would be an audience for it. Eh? Right. Just like you know, uh, this is music that we love to uh, listen to. Yeah. Uh, myself and Steve, uh, mostly on the hip hop side. So it was like testing grounds. Eh? We just see if the people will like it or not. Well, they not only liked it. I think uh, love it is probably an understatement. I think they are obsessed with the new sound that um, Thunder and Steve came up with. I just want to ask you, Tix, you know, you, you, uh, 
uh, employed in a full-time job and you dis decided to walk away from that into this what what made you take that gamble a lot of people will say it's a gamble mm. yeah I think uh, in the outside, in the outside, it doesn't really sound like the smartest idea ever. <laughs> and I think, uh, yeah, it, it was definitely something that my wife and I had to talk about. Yes. Um, but uh, you know, going back to what you were just discussing before that, I, I clearly remember when I first heard the VT ones. Yes. I was in uh, radio for a number of years. I think um, this year would have been my 16th year wow. in radio okay. if I stayed on. Right. And um, I came from observing the local music scene very uh, keenly, especially the, the early on the start of the hip hop scene, yeah. uh, back when uh, uh, the, when Mr. Green and um, uh, Sammy G were, were doing their stuff and uh, the guys from uh, X9 Homies and Roots for Roots and these guys and BSQ, Thunder, his, uh, his start at BSQ, I was yeah. right there at, on the radio side, like observing the music very closely. Eh? And I think secretly um, for me, it was, I was really waiting to see what was going to be the the movement that was going to come out that was going to take us to the world really yeah, yeah. and uh, i think that that moment in 2021 when i when i first heard vt1's that compilation album with those voices on it and of course thunder's production uh, i i reckon that subconsciously I had, check, I had checked out of my career back then. <laughs> so uh, 2023, fast forward to Jan, Jan 27th this year. Hi. Um, we, I had been observing uh, VT, VT Bop music and the way that it was going and, and you know, in sort of projecting forward growth and to see like, okay, can this thing actually, can this be the one, you know, can this yeah. actually turn into something viable for Fiji music? This year was the one where, uh, and, that, and that really happened after album two, right. because as we all know in music, it's one thing to do your first project. Yes. And that was always my thing. Yeah, okay, VT ones, they did a Stella a first project. Okay, that's, that's cool and all. Can they do it again? Right. Uh, so that's so where sort of like before before the release of album two. That's when I really started getting involved. You know, I called. I remember calling Thunder. Up, I was like, Hey, you know what? Let's discuss how we're gonna. How can I help um, uh, the, the the group that I used to work for? We assisted with uh, some videos for the for, right. for VT ones, and then I started getting more involved in the planning and things like that. And then after album two dropped, was in November last year, and then right. you know we saw the success of songs like Ika and uh, Vertaki and this other big songs that came off the album I was like okay set now we can replicate the thing yeah I feel like this is something that I could put uh, personally contribute to to make uh, a viable thing eh? so in right. Jan this year that was really the moment you know after yeah. album two was like confirmation for me eh? right okay this thing can actually grow into something yeah. viable because eh? you're always looking for like what's next eh? yeah and how we develop that food um, yeah so that was it for me was uh, was the missus happy when you uh, oh, no. to opt out of <laughs> I, mean, I, I think any anyone would be a bit worried, eh? yeah. especially coming from a place of uh, comfort. Yeah. And you know, you got I got I got I have three kids. Yes. Um, my wife obviously had a job that she was comfortable in as well. And all of a sudden, um, I was pretty much yeah, I was, I was the breadwinner in my family. Right. And all of a sudden, it's like you come home and say, okay, uh, I'm leaving work and I'm going to go and join Thunder to do uh, music. You know? So obviously it sounds, it sounds really crazy. And to be honest, you know, the day after I resigned, I sat at home and I was like, about to pick up the phone, like, hey, I take it back. I... <laughs> but think too late. Eh? Yeah, no, no, it was um, definitely an interesting time for the family and wouldn't take it back for the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were talking earlier, I was talking with um, Tix about um, the burden of responsibility now. You've, you know, you've joined with Thunder, you've got uh, VT Bop music up there, and out there the name is, it's, it's out there, it's everywhere. Even as far as uh, US, uh, Europe. So, you know, it's a big responsibility having now, everyone's going to look at you guys as the role model for how we're going to create our music how we're going to do the business of music, which is another, you know, it's a difficult task. So how does it feel to know that you are now in that seat, in the pilot seat, and uh, you're ready to take our industry forward? How, how does it feel? 
Well, I think that's something that we have sort of accepted as our role and responsibility in Fiji music right now. Eh? Yeah. And um, um, it's something that we don't take lightly. We do take it. We do take a lot upon ourselves to create like a model for Fiji music, right. uh, because uh, I think in general, before coming into the music industry, the Fiji music is a story of great potential, but no uh, results. Eh? Yes. No results. It's been a long time coming for Fiji music. We do, by no means we see ourselves as the first to do it. Right. Um, there were many movements before us that could have um, really set up the industry for the better. Eh? Uh, that's why when we do come into this, is not. it is about ourselves. You know, We, we do want to create sustainable livelihoods for our artists yes. and for us as a business. Yeah. But the wider goal is to ensure that one, when our time is done, because music is like that, it's fashion. Yeah. When, when, when VT1 is eventually out of fashion or style, uh, we, who, who knows, we might be on to our next project or what, yeah. there's a model that's left behind that people can sort of grab onto. That was the hardest thing coming in, really, was there was no uh, model to speak of in Fiji. Eh? Right. So when Sunday and I sat down on, okay, how are we going to plot out this business and make it happen? There's really nothing to uh, reference. Yes. So if anything, that's a big goal of ours as well, eh? um, is to live a long-term and worthwhile model that other people can can uh, replicate, duplicate, or improve on, or you know, we really want to be sure to leave something behind like that. Yeah, because um, the reason I ask is, uh, in the 80s, Danny Costello came up, and as an individual artist, he created. Um, kind of like a history, even before him there was Langani Rambukawanga, who many still regard as Fiji's most successful artist to date. Mm. Um, in terms of earnings, mm. he, you know, from the records that we have, he has uh, been the single most uh, biggest earner. So you got Langani, then you got Danny, but these are all individuals. Mm. You know, this is a new concept now. Mm. Where you have VT Bob, you have the VT One's label, and you uh, have artists like uh, Juben, J Taulaka, and all the young ones that are coming up. Uh, you know, I, I think this is maybe a more sustainable way of doing things, in my humble opinion, uh, because VT One's can can be like the Motown. You know how Motown created all Smokey Robinson, Marvin Gaye, and all these great artists. Uh, I think VT1, from my perspective, could be the Motown for Fiji music. And, um, mm. you know, it's something that maybe you could explore. It's, you know, it's, instead of saying, you know, when the VT1 goes out of flavor, I don't think it's going to go out of flavor. Mm. I think what will happen is you'll change it eh? as, as the times change. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and. and I, I, I certainly hope that we are around. The, we are definitely working very hard to ensure that that happens. Eh? Yeah. One thing that we are also not focusing on is like short-term results. So um, you know, obviously, that's one thing that's what, what I feel has really set back the industry here as well. Eh? Yeah. Um, just observing from the outside before I actually joined was um, a lot of people are looking for. Well, who is it? Mm -hmm. there, there, there needs to be a livelihood in this. Otherwise, yes. then why do it? Eh? Right. But because of that chase. Nobody's been working on long-term yes. development. Everybody is working gig to gig, uh, looking for quick cash to pay bills and stuff like the that. Hustle. But yeah, the hustle, the hustle and bustle of trying to make your uh, make ends meet. Eh? Um, we have a unique opportunity in that um, a lot of us in this label aren't musicians at all. Right. Uh, apart from Thunder and the team who uh, the writers and everyone else who deals with the music, my wife Mary and I, um, Hayden, our guy uh, who have a guy who is sitting right here behind the camera he looks after our comms right. we have other members of the team like Thierry who is in charge of our HR looks after our team members and their well-being um, we, ha we have a wider team of people support people and I feel like that's really where it needs to start eh? yes. is when we when new movements are coming to the fore he's like we know we can sing yes. we know we can do all the art and you know do amazing music that can transcend yeah. borders right. but do we have a team of support uh, members right. eh? yes. to support these artists yes. to ensure that we can uh, sort of replicate success over and over again. Eh? That's what we are really concerned with here at VT Bop is not duplication but replication. Can we replicate the success of the past? Like I was talking about right. album one versus album two. Yes. So 
I find is when you have a, t a good team of professionals behind the music, you will be able to replicate that easily and continue to do that. When you can replicate something, you can make money off of it regularly. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we'll be back after a short break to speak more about the future of music in Fiji. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to the show. We're here speaking with uh, the producer of uh, some of the most popular music that you hear on radio, that you watch on television and on social media. Uh, Thunder, the man behind the sound of uh, VD ones all the VD ones artists that you've heard, this is the man who uh, produced those sounds. So I, I just wanted to ask uh, Thunder, you know, a lot of people on social media and even people I meet ask me, What's up with that name? Where did that name come from? If you could just explain. So, uh, just before we um, dropped that album in 2021, right. uh, we met up with this uh, artist, and the original plan was to do like uh, individual albums. Right. That's four artists, and to have uh, four albums, that's like a lot of work. It wouldn't be done by the end of that year, so right. myself and uh, Steve. Uh, decided to put them on one album right. and uh, so it's like a collaboration of individual artists okay. so from there we started to brainstorm the name of the album which later became the name of the group right. the name uh, VT ones because like they are individual artists right. so uh, but coming together collaborating on one album right. so it's like the individual ones from Fiji so VT ones. Well, there you go. Now you know where the name came from. And uh, you know, people don't understand VT ones, and then you have VT Bob. Maybe just to explain what what's the difference between VT ones and VT Bob. VT ones is the name of the group, the yeah. artist. Eh? Uh, VT Bob Music. That's the the name of the the label, the company. Right. So VT ones is. Um, a branch off of uh, VT Bob music. Okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Sorry. You know, um, something that uh, a lot of people are also talking about is how popular very quickly uh, VT ones became. And, uh, you know, one of the things we spoke about was the sounds that you were using, the hip hop sound and all that. Um, you think that's the only thing that made VT ones very popular? I think it's uh, like a collaboration of the the diff uh, like what we have here the formula. Yeah. So the music like uh, <coughs> we uh, look at the trends of music overseas. Right. What what sounds are trending and like we incorporate it to the music that we do here, but still keeping that Fiji flavor, adding the lalis and. Right. Obviously, the lyrics are in uh, Fiji. Yes. And even the like, so the formula is: I'm doing the music. You have the writers, the composers, right. and then you have the artist. So for us, that's the formula that's working right now. And so, do, so do you like come up with a beat and uh, in the same room with the writer and the artist, or do they come yes, to yes, you? Yes, yeah, we, we all sit together and come up with the idea for one one song. One song. Yeah. Right. See, so, uh, something like uh, Yala Yala, that was uh, probably the first hit. Right. How, how did you come up with that uh, that song? Yeah, we sat in the room, uh, myself, Steve, and the artist, and uh, so. Like sometimes the idea comes from the artist, like uh, he wants to sing about like an experience that he had, yes. he had, and so Steve listening to his story, uh, the, yes. right. yeah. and uh, it's either that or like I come up with the music to uh, like you know uh, 
the feel of he, the story, eh? yes, like bring it up. Yeah, that's an important part, eh? capturing the emotion uh, with the music, with the music bed that you produce. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to ask uh, Tix, you know, <clears throat> having a great sound, mm. and you got uh, that with Thunder, and a great uh, vocalist, you got uh, you know all these great artists like Ju Ben, J Tauleka, and all that. That's only one part of the popularity. What, what do you think made uh, or makes VT1 so popular? We have a strong brand. Right. We, we focused a lot on building a very strong brand. And I think uh, that's something that the rest of music really needs to focus on is, what are we trying to brand here? Mm. Um, at the end of the day, this music is a product that we try to put out. Yeah. We're trying to market it. Anything that you want to make money off, you have to create a brand for. Right. And I think that was really the strength of the VT1s. Like coming in, one of the things that really interested me is how they, ca how they came up with the word VT once yeah. uh, I come from marketing so I understand that the audience right now the attention span is very short eh? yes. so you must capture them within the first what two seconds or I don't know what the new uh, that um, that attention quotient seems to keep uh, dropping every time I look at the numbers but right. one thing that VT once did was it made it easier more easier than ever to find quality Fijian music uh, you could uh, search up VT once or VT one S or whatever people call it uh, these days I can't <laughs> keep up with the new uh, pronunciations yeah. on YouTube or on your favorite streaming platform and you would be exposed to so many new Fijian voices right. uh, all set to quality music by Thunder and great writing by Sti at the time and also by our new uh, writing team now yeah. uh, we need to start making it easier to access our music online and yeah. where you st where that starts is with great branding right. uh, there's a lot of uh, people uh, who are starting to go in that direction or who have been working in that direction um, in the in the local music industry but I just thought that VT ones is a brand really stood out mm -hmm. and um, apart from the music the you know the payoff was that the music was great yes the first thing that people see is the name right. um, or, yeah, or the four letters and yeah. then you know so yeah branding I think that was really one thing that allowed it to take off so quickly right. Uh, you mentioned Sti as a, a writer, and who, who else is in your new writing team now? So like, uh, as uh, Thunder alluded to, we have a very strict process, right. which allows us to do things quite quickly. I right. think in the last uh, concert uh, that we did, Thunder pushed out 14 songs in 14 days, or what, what, what was it? Right. And that's because we've nailed down our process, so the production writer team and all that. Eh? So currently in our writer team, there is three. There's uh, Solo, Solo Bolau, um, right. he wrote uh, hits like Vunitaka, Marama, Fobility, and other of these, uh, these big songs. Right. Then you have um, Juben, our rapper. Yes. A lot of people don't uh, know that he writes as well. Like right. He not, doesn't only write for, for himself, he writes for other artists. In fact, uh, our, that, one of our biggest songs, Dende, yes. was written by Juben. Uh, right. the rapper yeah. um, and performed by Weja. Right. A lot of people don't don't know that, eh? that yes. uh, a lot of times the singers are coming they're not singing words that they pen themselves right. their teammates or their brothers uh, put it together for them right. uh, and then finally is uh, Jay Tauleka right. who has been a revelation for us at VT Bop uh, Music in the VT ones um, yeah, he's our third writer rounding up the thing but we're also seeing a lot of new uh, talent coming through from even some of our artists um, right. Oni uh, yeah. is now writing. Okay. Uh, her new EP, she wrote one of the biggest songs, you know, the biggest song of that EP, right. uh, the Rovo uh, of her, uh, Dondom, her EP called Dondoma Dala. Yeah. She wrote it. So we also encourage our artists to, you know, if they if they want to get into writing and composing their own music, it doesn't mean that we will just say, oh, you compose that song, yeah, we'll record it. Right. There's still quality checks that are in place. Eh? Like yeah. we have to. We have to A B test it. Okay, does this is this as good as this one, or uh, we want to make sure that the standard is still higher? Eh? Yes. Um, yeah. So right now, I'd say our team is four, eh? with uh, Oni now writing a few songs, right. and that's great too. Now that we're seeing the female perspective coming through in the right. uh, the, uh, the music that we put out, yes. you'll notice some of the new music that we put out. Um, when the girls sing it, it sounds because you know a lot of music. When when women sing it, you can tell it was written by a man. Eh? Yes, yes. The perspectives so are very different. Very different. Yeah. Right. Um, but that's what that's another thing that's allowed us to be a bit uh, nimble in our creativity at the label. Eh? Right. So you know, um, recently we had a discussion with uh, Sunia Soko Longa, mm, and, yes. he, and he mentioned something I found very interesting. <coughs> 
that all the great writers are not necessarily great singers, and all the great singers are not necessarily great writers. So I think with your formula, you managed to find a way to marry the right song to the right voice. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, that's, a, that's really one of our strengths, is allowing um, great voices to have access to great writing. Yes. Um, that's a, a, a total misconception in music in Fiji especially. In Fiji especially, the, the, wider, the world understands this. Yes. Is that whole concept of writer versus performer. Right. Um, and, and in fact, in Fiji, it gets a bit bitter at times, you know, they're like, right. oh, this fellow singing, oh, you can't write your own song, write your own song. Right. Yeah. You see that on social media. You see it on social media. Eh? It's like, oh, <laughs> but you can't write your own song. Uh, well, not many people can. Yes. That's why it's an art. Yes. Um, and not many of these writers, like you said, can perform. Right. And, uh, you should hear the demo from Dende right. that uh, Juben sent us. Yeah. No way. But uh, <laughs> Weza. <laughs> but Weza <laughs> but, but did, stepped did in. Did a great job. Oh, that? yeah. No, he killed it. And yeah. that song, um, yeah, it got to, it's over a million views and it's doing well on streaming. And um, yeah, but it, it, it proves that model. And it doesn't mean that one is better than the other. And that's one, one attitude that really needs to stop here. It's like, yeah. if you can't do both, you are not worth anything. Mm. No, it yeah. doesn't work that way. Yeah. You know, uh, how does it feel to get a million views? Just, just that feeling. How does that feel? I don't know. How does it feel? <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to ask the artist. Eh? But yeah. like, uh, for all, you know, like it's a team work. Yeah. Uh, that one million views, like to maybe artists overseas or even here, it's like uh, they've gotten used to it. We are just starting to get used to that. Eh? Right. But like all achievements that we yeah. blessed to. Uh, you know, because it's uh, something from a small dot in the ocean yes. to be able to produce a sound that can get a million views. It's not easy. No. So, you know, it's, uh, heads off to you guys. You know, you, you got something here that's uh, actually working. But not everybody in the industry, you know, truth be told, will be pleased with uh, your recent success. Some of the probably artists who have not been uh, brought up in the technology that you have nowadays. There's two criticisms, and I'm just gonna you know, ask uh, your views on that. One is, you guys don't perform with live musicians, that's one. The other one is, and they're only good because they're using a computer. You know, so how do you respond to that? <laughs> yeah, you know we've we've heard uh, so many things right. after coming into this uh, music, and um, yeah, to be honest, it doesn't really phase us at all. Yeah. Uh, we welcome all criticism and um, opinions on the music that we put out, but um, numbers don't lie. Yes, and I think that if you're trying to make music that creates impact. We need to go back to numbers. We right. need to start analyzing this. Um, we need to start analyzing trends, right. and we need to start moving in the direction that the world is moving into. Yes. Uh, don't get me wrong; I love live music. Yeah. I, I I love watching a band perform, especially a tight band. Right. Um, I, I'd love to um, to involve bands in our. But you know, the thing is, we've we've looked at this music upside down, left, right, and we've seen that the model that we are currently um, going with right now works. Right. Um, that's always that's that's an argument as old as time. Eh? Is as generations uh, 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 sort of come into uh, maturity, the generation before will uh, feel a bit of stress yeah. and discomfort. And uh, we're happy to be that person who's creating a bit of discomfort in the industry. We we believe it's a necessary part of development. Right. We want to be those people who are asking questions of uh, the way things are set up here. Um, and at the same time, we don't mean it with any disrespect. Uh, we are open to work with the people who have been working in the industry um, before us. Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, but uh, I, we understand totally. You know, uh, look at the, the different eras. You know, yes. the, the people who came in. The 80s, the, the guys who came in the 50s hated it. Right. You come in the 90s, the guys in the 70s hated it. Right. Of course, we're going to generate some discomfort. So that's a very normal part of development. Right. Uh, as per the computer versus uh, live music, right. 
That's it. Uh, I'm sure when they invented the guitar, the flute player got a bit angry. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's just the way music is made now, and I hope that people can start taking on new technology because that's just the, how people consume music right. these days. They enjoy the beats, and otherwise we wouldn't be seeing the results that we are seeing right now. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll be right back after a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to The Lens at 177. I'm here having a discussion with Tix and Thunder from Vitibop. And, um, you know, for those of you that don't know, and I don't think there'll be many who don't know, um, Viti once actually went and uh, were invited to go to the powerhouse. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, the powerhouse is a big deal when it comes to, uh, as an artist, to just to go there and, and perform there, it's a huge deal. So I just wanted to ask uh, both of you, you know, that's not only a huge boost for VT1s, it's a boost for Fiji. It now opens the door for other Fijian artists because you guys have managed to, you know, break through. So how, do, how does that feel and how did that come about? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, Powerhouse Sydney, we, well, that was in, what was it? Was it a month ago? How many weeks ago is it? We just got back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. There's so much happening. Um, yeah, but um, Powerhouse Sydney, so that, that was a partnership between us and a, a friend of ours who owns this company called Tapestry. Um, she's known as MC Trey in the rap right. world. Yes. So she contacted us saying that there was an opportunity to work with the Powerhouse Museum in Sydney, in Altimo, eh? the one in, in Sydney, the city. Yeah. So we, we got in touch with her. I think they were looking at a way to engage the indigenous communities in uh, right. in Sydney. A lot of the people uh, from our communities over there don't access these spaces. But when right. you go in, it's such an amazing place. Eh? Yes. The powerhouse is uh, it's where like art and science meet. That's it's a right. great place to be inspired, to learn about the past and the way it impacts the future and all of that. Eh? Right. So that was um, how we went up. We initially went to do a program that would entice these people to come to the powerhouse right. and to explore the powerhouse to new audiences in Sydney. Um, that was the main intention of us going up and performing at the powerhouse. Right. Uh, but you're right, like one thing that we did uh, that that we realized going up was a lot of our artists who are going to Australia to perform, Australia, New Zealand, internationally, are going in lanes that are not um, uh, that do not look after their best interest. Right. There's a lot of artists who are going up with promoters who, who book them on a show and then leave them to fend for themselves until the next one. Right. And you, you, you see that mainly within Melanesian arts yeah. as we go up and we get exposed. We have great buy-in from markets overseas. But the people that we are in contact with who are taking us up don't have our best interests at heart. Right. So we, we going up was really exploring how can we as VT1s go overseas legitimately. You see these festivals that happen, these uh, tours that happen overseas, they don't happen. There's many different lanes. Eh? Right. We wanted to be in the official ones so that we can look after the well-being of our artists as they travel up. Right. So this was part of that uh, push. Yes. So uh, how, how was uh, when when they were, when you guys went there and performed? What was the response like from the public? Oh. Uh, it was uh, amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. It, it, firstly. Yeah, Thunder's got a great story about how we stood there looking at our uh, logo on the wall. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speak about that. It was, uh, I was telling Tix when we were there, like a really proud moment. Right. To, like, uh, the night of the show, they had uh, our logo uh, projected onto the side of the Powerhouse Museum. Yes. So he had VT1s and Powerhouse. And after the show, I was telling Tix, like, like really proud of uh, the team and like the journey that yes. we. Yeah. This is uh, that artwork that was projected there. Our team was designing it in uh, Benau Street in Watuanga, you know. Right. Even, even the music. 
in a small place in uh, Fiji, and here it is being projected uh, on a museum in another country. You know, like very proud to yes. for that to happen. Also, like just to mention the the feedback of the crowd uh, during the performances. Yeah. It was basically like a show he, uh, here, the VT1 show. Mm -hmm. So like we, we can just thank the community, the Fijian community, for coming out to support. Uh, the VT1 show at Powerhouse. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, while, while I have you, Thunder, we've heard everything that you've had to offer so far. You know, with all the artists that have come up now, we've got Wedger, we've got all this new, we've got Oni and her new song. What's, what's next? You know, with music, there's it's always got to be something else around the corner. What, what, can, uh, what can fans expect in the future? Uh, right now, for us, the formula is still working. Right. We'll just follow that same model if uh, new ideas come out, like you'll, he you'll hear it in the next album. Right. Uh, but it's just like that. We are always experimenting and trying out new stuff. Yes. And But that I can promise you, every new release will be something. Something yeah. new there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And yeah, uh, just, uh, you know, it takes us um, Thunder explain having that just having that brand up on the you know powerhouse museum is a big deal yeah you know like how did it feel for you yeah brought it here to my I mean it was yeah. confirmation eh? for yeah. me personally it was confirmation of the decision to to live and support the music like being there in Australia uh, for a lot of the artists who went up there was their first time to Australia right you know seeing them come out of the the, the arri arrivals at uh, Sydney you know even that eh? yeah. we were it was just like moments right. so many moments of confirmation as to this being the right decision to make and this music having a place in the world. Eh? Right. Um, one other thing we talked about was like when we worked, because uh, we do quite a few shows in Fiji, when we finally got to go up to Powerhouse and work with their technical team and all, one thing that was different was we went in fully expecting, you know, the Fijian style, eh? oh, we're going to be embarrassed, it's going to be like, you know, we won't know what to do here. No, no man, we felt right at home. Yes. I think technically uh, Fiji uh, should really pat itself on the back for the opportunities that it creates for our young creators. We have access to the same technologies that these people have access to overseas. Right. Uh, in fact, a lot of our experiences might be just a, a cut above the experiences that they have there. Like right. um, I was talking to the sound engineer at our shows in, yes. at our show in Sydney, and he was like, "Oh, you know, uh, this is one of the biggest shows I've ever done. I think we did a couple hundred in um, in, in, in the in the powerhouse." And then I was looking at Thunder, I was like, "Man." Like at home, we do a couple thousand in our shows. So even that, it was like confirmation, like, you know, no, we are meant to be here. This is a time for Fiji music yes. to go to the world. We uh, offer value overseas as well. Yeah. So that was uh, the secondary thing that I thought of uh, at the powerhouse. Right. Um, uh, you mentioned that Juben is about to venture out mm. to, to do a special show in uh, Australia? Yep, so uh, yeah. yeah, Juben, congratulations to Ju. He's uh, been invited to perform at the Four Elements Hip Hop uh, Festival and Conference in Blacktown, Sydney. It's, um, it's, a co it's a conference and festival which focuses on indigenous hip hop, right. hip hop from people of uh, color and uh, indigenous backgrounds. We'll, uh, we'll see people from all, over, all around the world coming to share their music. Right. And uh, Ju, um, I, I talk about this all the time, is we both said on the panel at um, Domovo yes. Tali that uh, the competition where Jew was uh, discovered. Yeah, he, he represents a revolution in uh, Fiji hip hop. Right. He's pretty much the first one to ever do it in full Itauke Fijian. Right. Um, so it's a very exciting time for Fiji hip hop as we have a representative of ours going to represent the industry yeah. uh, and, and our culture, right. really, at that festival. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, Juben, uh, for me, being on the judging panel last year and um, listening to his uh, entry his submission that uh, Kindava, I know that, yeah. that song. I've never heard uh, Fijian music put out that way with that kind of a message. Mm -hmm. And I think he's something, he's got something special and I think we're going to see bigger and better things from him in the future. Mm -hmm. But uh, for Viti Bob and Viti Ones, what's the ultimate goal? Mm -hmm. 
So we have a clear vision. Eh? Uh, we have a clear vision at the label. Very early on, we set it out. We wanted to take Fiji music to the world. And I think that's something that's been bouncing around the industry. And people uh, have interpreted Fiji music to the world uh, in their own way. Right. But for us, Fiji music to the world is a two-part. Eh? Right. Uh, we fully intend to take our sound to the world, develop talent that can go and translate internationally. But the ultimate goal at Viti Bop is to bring the world back to Fiji. Right. Uh, that's where real impact happens in our communities. Uh, right. That's where the economy will really thrive. And that's where we as a music industry will really give back uh, as a legitimate uh, uh, player in the yeah. Fijian economy. So that's the two pata that represents our movement and what we're trying to do here. We, we want to take Fiji music to the world, take advantage of all the opportunities that are available to us internationally and eventually grow an industry here. Right. Bring the world back here. Yes. Uh, we envision a Fiji where there's lots of big festivals. We have studios open here. Right. Our children have access to facilities to express themselves musically. Um, yeah. Our goals, it, it, it goes way beyond ourselves as a, as a company. Right. And uh, we will do everything to ensure that that happens. Thank you. I think uh, important for the powers that be, the people that sit in government, um, we have a company here, we have young artists that are creating history. And uh, we need the support. They need the support of government to take this uh, step further. Uh, they've already proven that they can do it. They've done shows where thousands have turned up. They've uh, added value to the economy in their own way, out of their own pocket. And uh, it may be time now for the state to actually um, step in and provide the support that they need to take it even further. Thank you for watching the show. And please visit our website, www.fijitimes.com and our social media platforms on Facebook and Twitter to watch this show and uh, other shows like it. And be on the lookout for the next new exciting music from Viti Bok and Viti Watch.